Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Nate. I also go by Hockey Boy and Nate. Today, we are still discussing the two tropical systems that could be forming in the Atlantic, one of which could be impacting the US. So if you guys are new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe. Leave a like on this video to help me out with YouTube's algorithm so that we can get this to as many people as possible. Share this with friends and family on social media, especially Facebook and Twitter. That would be greatly appreciated. And let's get straight into the video. But before we actually do that, I do want to mention that we do have timestamps in the, descri in the uh, description down below, as well as chapters for people to scroll on through. So we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about the tropics for the most part here today, but I do want to briefly get into the severe weather that's going to be hitting the U.S., so uh, just bear with me here for a second. But if you don't want to, you can go ahead and skip uh, into the main part of the video. This light green here is a general thunderstorm risk, so if you are outlined in this light green, then uh, you don't really have a huge chance for severe weather. It's more or less kind of like a 0 out of 5 chance, but it's like, in my opinion, a non-zero chance for severe weather. So just know that you might be getting some rain, maybe some general thunderstorms. 1 out of 5 on the severe weather scale here, indicated in the dark green, that is a marginal risk. And then we have a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale here that is being indicated as a slight risk here. And so places near Baltimore, Washington, Philadelphia, even places of the NYC metro area could potentially be impacted by some of these uh, severe storms. If we take a look at the probabilities uh, for the hazards here, we have our hail outlook, which is a uh, which shows us that we have a 5% chance uh, for hail in some of these areas indicated in brown. So whatever probability you have, that is your chance of seeing one inch size hail or larger within a 25 mile radius. Then you also have your wind outlook here, 5% indicated in brown, 15 in yellow. So whatever probability you have, that is your chance of seeing 58 mile per hour winds or greater within a 25 mile radius. And then zero uh, or at least less than 2% chance for tornadoes here today on Monday. So that is, uh, that is the good news for today's outlook. Let's take a look at the uh, day, the uh, high temperatures for today here. Uh, much of the country covered in 90s uh, to ev uh, even a little lower than that, 80s and 90s. Uh, some areas here across the uh, Great Lakes, even into the northeast, get into the 70s in some spots. But m a lot of this tan, a lot of this white indicate 90s, even triple digits in some spots. Look at the desert here. The desert anywhere here near the Rocky Mountains needs rain. And uh, this is not helping the fact that some of these temperatures are going in upwards of triple digits. So uh, we're praying that there's uh, more rain that comes near you. We're thinking that there might be some the beginning of next week, but that's a little bit too far out to say. So uh, for right now, it just seems like it's an unending cycle of hot, dry conditions for the western portions of the United States, but for the most part, everyone's covered in 80s to 90s here in the United States, or the main part of the United States. Then we're going to take a look at our day two outlook here. Uh, as I said, a uh, dark green area is indicated as a one out of five on the severe weather scale or a marginal risk, and that is uh, mainly across portions of the Carolinas as well as eastern Georgia, northeastern parts of Florida, like Jacksonville. So you guys have the potential to get some severe weather, both of which could include damaging winds and large hail, but it's only a 5% chance. So that is the good news in that aspect. High temperatures for Tuesday. It just seems to get worse here for the, uh, for the west. I mean, look at this. Some areas now as far north as Montana now join the fray of triple digits uh, even 107 expected near Billings. That is absolutely insane. Uh, places here in Arizona and the southern parts of California, as well as Vegas, uh, triple digits to even 110, uh, even 120 there uh, near the places of uh, the Grand Canyon. And that is absolutely that that is unbearably hot. Uh, so this is this is definitely not something that. Uh, is expected to go down in any shape or form and uh, we're really gonna have to uh, well I'm praying for you all over there that you guys seek the help that you guys need uh, from the weather In other news places of the uh, Mississippi and Ohio River Valley do cool down a bit after these uh, wave of showers that pass on through here 
uh, cold front kind of sets in and pass, um, well, it's actually kind of passed on through already or is passing on through um, by this time. And so you can expect temperatures a little bit cooler in the, around the uh, low 80s to maybe even the 70s, 60s as far north uh, as the border, but uh, that's a little bit of a stretch. So I'd say 80s and 70s for the most part here across portions of the Mississippi, Ohio River Valley, as well as the Great Lakes and the Northeast. And then the South is going to continue to stay in beach weather, 90s, even to uh, maybe even triple digits, depending upon where you are. Then we also have our day three outlook here for Wednesday. Nothing really too much to report on that. So let's get straight in to the main part of the video here as we accidentally skip a slide. Um, the main part of the video here, which is the tropics, our tropical weather update. And my goodness, we're here only on Monday, June 14th, 2021. And we already have a lot of activity to talk about. Uh, not too much to report on the lower disturbances, but we do have three areas to watch here in the Atlantic, two of which have been designated as invests. So that is really interesting to look at, one of which actually has a high chance of formation. So let's uh, go from weakest to, uh, well, not exactly weakest, but lowest probability of formation to highest probability of formation. Uh, over the next five days so we have our disturbance over here off the coast of africa in the main development region which is just uh, basically this entire space here uh, in between africa and the uh, caribbean so uh, this has been designated as a 10 percent chance of formation over the next two days and a 20 percent chance of formation over the next five days it's supposed to remain mainly over water but there's a lot of dry air coming off from africa and a lot of wind shear so this thing isn't expected to be all too much or it's not forecasted to do a whole lot even if it does form so that is the good news in that aspect we also are still talking about invest 92l and how this could potentially creep further and further into the gulf could also see impacts along portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, I'm starting to think that places near Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama really need to watch out for this. Florida, not too much. I'm thinking this is going to mainly head a bit further uh, to the west of you, but it could shift off to the east and maybe places like Pensacola, Panama Beach, they could potentially be uh, impacted as well. But a 20% chance of formation over the next two days, 60% chance of formation over the next five days. And uh, we're really looking to watch out for this thing, especially around Wednesday. That's around the time frame in which I'm expecting this thing to form. And so we'll have more updates on Invest 92L as the time continues to progress. Then we also have the recently designated Invest 93L. And uh, we talked about this in our video prior that we uploaded to where there was the potential for two tropical systems to form and how this could potentially uh, race across and so what's happening here is that that sneaky second tropical system has uh, now been uh, recognized more or less as an area disturbance and uh, it has been given a high chance of formation over the next two days and five days so a 70% chance of formation over the next two and five days has been issued for this little invest. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth as we head a little bit further into the video. We also going to want to talk about the Pacific here because we can't neglect our friends over in Hawaii. And so uh, two things to talk about. We have one disturbance here across the southern coast of Mexico that has been designated as a 0% chance of formation over the next two days, 30% over the next five days. And then we also have Tropical Storm Carlos, which is currently rumbling through across portions of the Eastern Pacific. So we'll talk about Carlos a little bit more here. Uh, Carlos, as of 2 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, has been uh, designated as a 40 mile per hour tropical storm. It was a 45 mile per hour tropical storm, but it has weakened a little bit. And so it is uh, now a 40 mile per hour storm with a with 1004 millibars as its minimum pressure moving west southwest at seven miles per hour 
Now, according to the National Hurricane Center, this thing is expected to continue to go on its nice little weakening trend. And uh, with that, don't foresee this to be a massive impact to Hawaii there. But we'll zoom out a bit uh, towards the latter stage of us discussing Tropical Storm Carlos. Here's the satellite imagery. You can see there's not a whole lot of thunderstorms uh, that are with this thing more or less actually it's recently started to fire up more and more thunderstorms if you go back to the video that we were talking about with this area of disturbance uh there was a lot more thunderstorms with this but now a lot of dry air seem to uh kind of envelop the western side of the tropical system the northwestern and southwestern part uh quadrants more or less are kind of been contaminated with a lot of this dry air and tropical systems don't really like that so they kind of lose their uh their moisture lose a lot of their characteristics and tend to die out rather quickly but we do have some more thunderstorms that are starting to form across a lot of deep convection with these uh brighter reds and blacks meaning that the uh, tops of the thunderstorms are actually extending higher and higher up into the atmosphere and so Definitely something to continue to monitor to see if this thing has its final hurrah, more or less, to try and uh, survive further and further. But to talk about, again, with the dry air, you can see a lot of these uh, whites are uh, more or less uh, kind of a lot more of uh, moisture in the uh, atmosphere. And uh, once you start to get darker and darker into, like, the dark grays and into the, the blacks, more or less, that's when it starts to get a lot drier and Right around these thunderstorms, this is right where the uh, center of low pressure is for Carlos, and a lot of this dry air out in front of it is uh, expected to uh, really uh, kind of hamper uh, further development, as well as the uh, lack of uh, high sea surface temperatures. And so this thing isn't expected to sustain all the way through as it continues to head to Hawaii. But we do have our spaghetti models here, which is our uh, forecast ensembles, more or less, uh, for each models, and uh, for each model, I should say. And this thing will basically give us a general idea as to where Carlos will head off to according to this specific model. So we're going to be using the GEFS first, or the GEFS. And you can see a lot of these little lines here. And this is basically the designated tracks for Carlos. So each little line is its own little mini run, more or less. There's a lot of them, actually. There's 30 separate runs that uh, make up this ensemble run. And so you can see a lot of it stays within this little cone right within here. And so the general track for this system is mainly off to the west, and it mainly stays a little bit further south of Hawaii. Uh, but as of right now, it's a little too far out to tell to say that uh, this thing may or may not directly impact Hawaii. It may shift any way, shape, or form. So we really got to watch out for it. But according to the GEFS, as of right now, doesn't seem to be all too much the case. If we take a look at the Euro, the Euro actually says the same exact thing. It's actually a lot more, I guess, it really made up its mind as to uh, where it was, uh, where Carlos is going to head off to. And so a very, very small cone of uh, where this thing is uh, traveling. It seems to want it to travel a lot further to the west, not shifting off to the north and west. So according to the Euro, the Euro even states that Hawaii may not be impacted. And uh, if we take a look at the multi-spaghetti models, where uh, we take a whole lot of different other models and they kind of take, uh, take a general consensus more or less. There's a lot of them that take that same stance with the Euro and the GFS where it stays uh, far off to the south of Hawaii, but there are a couple that do curl off, head off to the north and west. Uh, there's even some that move due northwest off of this. So there is the potential for this uh, to head off into that general vicinity, but the good news about this is that this isn't forecasted to be anytime soon. If uh, we were to start talking about impacts on Hawaii, I would say the beginning of next week on Sunday or Monday on the 20th or the 21st, that's when we really could start talking about it. But as of right now, it's uh, very far out to tell, and so we don't really have too much to uh, say off of that. Now, if we take a look at the simulated 
reflectivity or the simulated radar here from the GFS. You can see here is Carlos all the way off to the right side here, almost out of the picture actually. And this is on Tuesday. And so you can see as time progresses from Tuesday to Thursday, uh, this thing starts to become a lot more broad, not as uh, confined as a uh, tropical system. And it starts to lose its energy, a lot less rain forecasted with it as it continues to move on through. This is by Saturday and then uh, all the way across to Monday. It almost is non-existent here. And so there isn't really too much to say uh, if you live here near Hawaii at this moment. Now let's talk about our recently designated invest, Invest 93L. Now this has 70% chance of forming over the next two, five days, however way you want to call it. Uh, the point being is it has a high chance of formation uh, within a short time span. And you can even already see here, there is already a little curly Q uh, motion with this tropical system. So it already has a little bit of um, tropical characteristics. It also has a little bit of the ventilation aspect here on the southeastern quadrant as well. So this thing does look like it's starting to get its act together a little bit more uh, as time continues to progress. And the uh, interesting thing about this is that we can actually uh, go to another, um, we can actually go to another program here to see this, which is uh, actually Radar Omega. Radar Omega, as I've said on my live streams, is a pretty good uh, radar to use for just general United States, but it also has satellite, it also has um, little overlays that you can put on as long as you pay like a little extra or whatever. But the cool thing about this is that you can see satellite here. You can also see the satellite in 3D and we can, uh, we can use this to uh, determine as to what all is happening within this storm. And so by looking at 3D, you can see a lot of explosive convection here. A lot of these cloud bases that are getting pretty high up in the sky. Let's see if I can change my pen here a little bit. There it is. Look at how high this cloud base is uh, right towards the center area of low pressure and a lot of deep convection that's rising, a lot of rising motion with these thunderstorms here inside the uh, actual tropical system. And so that is the sign of a strengthening, uh, strengthening tropical system that's really trying to get its act together. You can even see the overshooting tops here uh, with how strong the convection is. So this is a pretty healthy tropical system. The latest infrared satellite data just came in, and uh, you can see that this thing really has some uh, really prominent um, thunderstorm tops, some overshooting tops more or less with this system. And uh, this, is, this is a sign of a strengthening tropical system. We could potentially see our uh, second tropical system, tropical... Um, whether it's a depression or tropical storm bill is possible here uh, within the next 24 hours across portions of the uh, eastern United States. But it doesn't seem as if it will impact it too much. You can take a look here at the satellite and uh, based off of the cloud tops, you can see it's relatively far away from the uh, Outer Banks here in North Carolina. And this thing is expected to head off to the north and east further out to sea. Uh, doesn't seem like it's going to be impacting Bermuda all too much. And so that is the good news there. But uh, as of right now, a cool thing to see off of Radar Omega with the overshooting tops and how everything transpires. And so uh, just one thing that I wanted to make a note of here for this video. Whoop! Future Nathan here with an update. While I was editing the video, actually, the National Hurricane Center decided to put out this nice little bulletin that says that Tropical Depression 2 will officially be designated uh, offshore of North Carolina. So, there you go. We have our second tropical system of the year and uh, potentially a uh, tropical storm to form off of this and we could potentially have tropical storm bill here relatively soon now if we take a look at the uh, ensemble runs here the spaghetti models uh, for invest 93l it would have to agree with the national hurricane center saying that this thing would continue to head off to the northeast as a matter of fact very small cone here uh, except for it heading off to uh, portions of newfoundland over here in Canada, maybe even portions of Nova Scotia as well. But 
This thing is expected to head off to the north and east. Nothing too concerning to make a note of, but uh, the track does take it over into eastern portions of Canada. Same thing here with the uh, Canadian model here. Uh, you can actually see that this actually uh, is has a little bit more of a consensus as to um, where it it's actually heading. This actually says that it's going to head a bit further east of Nova Scotia and uh, just impact uh, Newfoundland. And then after that, a resort to the northern portions of the Atlantic Ocean. But the consensus here is that it's going to stay away from the United States and that it is going to eventually head off further out to sea and further off to the North Atlantic. And in, even the multi-spaghetti models, a bunch of different other model runs, uh, even say that this will continue to head off. But the time frame, more or less, according to most of these models, is uh, two to four days as to when this could potentially be getting around... Uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland uh, or, or when it could be passing it. So uh, 36 hours to even 72 hours, uh, maybe further along to 96 hours. Uh, that's around the time frame in which this could be uh, passing on through that general vicinity. Now, if we take a look at the simulated reflectivity here, uh, this only goes out to uh, tomorrow for the HWRF. I don't know why uh, Weatherbell does this, but... It is what it is. It gives me a general idea as to where this is heading off, or it gives people a general idea as to uh, if specific areas are going to get rain or not. And you can see here, uh, based off of the HWRF, you got a lot of this spin already. This is expecting, according to this model, to uh, actually start to tighten up and maybe become tropical. And so as this uh, continues to move on through, gather a lot more moisture as it heads up the Gulf Stream, you can see that this thing does start to become... Uh, rather interesting and the HWRF one of the best models here for tropical weather is uh, giving it the green light as for the potential uh, formation of tropical storm bill here in the uh, western portions of the Atlantic now if we take a look at the sea surface temperatures uh, this is not the right time but that's okay uh, the sea surface temperatures here for Monday you can see that Gulf Stream as it extends further up uh, with these uh, warmer temperatures and uh, anywhere within the uh, orange or yellows, maybe even a little bit of a green, but not really, uh, not too much. It'd have to be uh, the dark green in order for that to be the case. But anywhere in the yellows, further into the reds, even pinks, uh, that's when you uh, that's when you can expect that there is a lot of warm, uh, warm sea surface temperatures. There's actually really warm sea surface temperatures and upwards of. 80 uh, maybe the mid 80s to uh, 90s in uh, temperatures in Fahrenheit we're uh, actually looking at 26 degrees Celsius and higher here from the yellows and onwards 25 degrees Celsius as it heads further into the greens and dark greens but uh, this does have a pocket of uh, warm sea surface temperatures for this tropical system to work off of and uh, not too uncommon to see the Gulf Stream here uh, get a little bit of action with a tropical system. So something really interesting to say uh, to mention for all of you. Now, from a wind shear perspective, this is the 850 to 200 millibar wind shear. So it's basically any wind that could impact a tropical system. Here is the tropical system uh, according to the GFS on uh, on a Monday, June 14th. A very strong uh, jet stream off to the north of it. Uh, Almost a bit of a troughing action, a light trough more or less uh, with this system here that's moving on through uh, portions of the northeast and the mid-Atlantic. That's the reason why there is a bit of severe weather that's forecasted uh, here on Monday. But then as this trough continues to move on through, you can see how it starts to really uh, curl and anchor down. Most of the storms head to the south and east, and as this tropical system heads off, to the north and east, it starts to get kind of channeled and it doesn't really have anywhere to go because there is a high pressure off to the east of it and it doesn't like high pressure so it tries to stay away from that and uh, the more moisture, the more channeling is uh, kind of giving it the green light more or less to ride along the boundary, ride along this trough and it'll get forced. Uh, we, call, um, we call this more or less uh, deepening the tropical system is deepening as it rides along that boundary and shoots off to the north and uh, north and east. And you can expect this to start increasing in speed as this heads off into the general vicinity of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. So 
definitely something to make a note of is that the wind shear is strong and it is channeling this tropical system to move off to the north and east uh, at rather high speeds. Now, if we take a look at the uh, dry air here today, this is from the GEOS uh, model from NASA, and uh, you can see uh, anywhere in the, uh, let's just call purple to orange and even yellows and uh, whites almost, that is some heavy amounts of dust. Heavy amounts of Saharan dust that's being blown in from Africa, and... As we mentioned earlier, tropical systems don't really like dry air, and so it tends to wither away. But this is um, this is the uh, scan as of Monday, and you can see here's the tropical system um, just a little bit far off of the Carolinas. There is not a whole lot of dust anywhere around this. I mean, anywhere in the uh, greens to maybe even the lighter purples, the kind of in between of the green and purples, that's all right. It can function off of that, and so. Because there isn't really like any of these areas where it has orange right next to it, I'm not anticipating uh, dry air to be a major factor of the tropical system. And so it is good uh, from that parameter right there. Alrighty, let us talk about Invest 92L. This one has a 20% chance of formation over the next two days. 60% chance of formation over the next five days. I am not anticipating this to start forming until probably the stages of Wednesday into Thursday. Uh, I really don't think that this thing has a, as much moisture as it needs to start to try and consolidate, but it will get a little bit of a kick more or less from a tropical wave that's surging on through. Uh, it's kind of battling, the tropical wave's kind of battling the dry air as well, but if the tropical wave does make it to this general area of convergence, we could potentially see a tropical system that could impact the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if we take a look at the ensemble runs, there is a couple spaghetti models. There is a couple ensemble members that do say that this thing will get its act together and head off towards the north, eventually into the areas of eastern Texas, southern Louisiana to like the Lake Charles area. And so there is uh, some cause for concern that uh, this model is starting to kind of uh, get its act together a little bit. But this, uh, this model scan here was actually the previous model run. And so we'll take a look at the newest one that just came out. And uh, we do still have two members that say it will head off to the north. Another one that says it will head off to the south and move on through. But personally, I don't think the GFS is actually figuring out what... Uh, tropical system is doing what because if you remember we did have that disturbance in the Pacific that did have a 30% chance of formation over the next five days 0% chance over the next two days and both of which both of these tropical systems one moving off to the north another one moving to the north and west I do think both of them are plausible maybe not as much this one it does have a um, it, it, it's in a better environment but it probably won't form until a whole lot later but I do still think that both tropical systems at the same time are plausible and that both could be functioning. But I think this model uh, is really having a difficult time distinguishing as to what could be what and thinking there can't be two of the same or at least uh, based off of the same run for Invest 92L. So that's something to keep in mind with that. But the one thing that I do want to talk about here is that here's the multi-spaghetti models and you have a couple of the uh, models here that are saying that it will head off to the north. Some of the others that say uh, also can't distinguish between what is what uh, with one disturbance over here, another disturbance over here. Uh, both of which uh, still say that one uh, tropical system will form in uh, any of the other areas. So it's uh, really something to uh, watch out for, especially with the ones that are heading off into the Gulf, because if that tropical storm or that tropical system does form, then it could potentially impact portions of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, maybe Florida, uh, but we'll have to see as this continues to move about. Now, if we take a look at the simulated reflectivity here, uh, this is going to basically tell us the rain rate. So the uh, brighter the colors, more or less, the uh, heavier the amounts of rain we can expect. So this is Monday. And uh, we can see here, here's our invest right here in the Bay of Campeche. And uh, this is 
just kind of sitting here. It's going to be sitting here for quite some time. Here's Invest 93L. Here's the tropical wave I was talking about. I was actually discussing it on my Discord server a couple days prior. Uh, so if you want more information about what I'm thinking about with forecasts, feel free to join that in the description down below. But I was talking about this tropical wave and how this could potentially be uh, supplying an additional amount of moisture to give it that final kick in the rear to really start to get its act together. And so if we uh, watch how this progresses as it heads off to the north and west, you can see that this actually does get closer and closer to the area, uh, the area to watch the disturbance there in the Gulf of Mexico. And as this uh, kind of congeals by Wednesday evening, you can see how this becomes a giant mess of tropical storms and a lot of convergence most likely will take place here. This will start to kind of form a, a general area of low pressure. And as this continues to move off by Friday, you can see that this really could potentially move off to the north and impact portions of the uh, of places in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, as, like I mentioned before, the southern states, southeastern states, those general vicinity, uh, that general vicinity could potentially be impacted. The other thing that I want to mention too is as we continue to move on through with the simulated radar, this does move over land, but it basically just sits there for a good portion of a few days. So. Uh, rain most likely will be the main cause of concern, especially as to how it builds up. Flooding will probably be the issue here as uh, this continues to progress. But the good news is, is by Monday into Tuesday, this does move off to the north and east according to this model run. And so uh, this will basically uh, deepen, as I said. And uh, uh, as I said, with uh, 93L, this will basically move out of the United States, but move through the mid-Atlantic and most likely the Northeast as time continues to move on through. Now, if we take a look at the sea surface temperatures here, very warm here across the Gulf of Mexico, uh, very favorable conditions from a... Um, from a sea surface temperature perspective, also very warm there in the Pacific, which I was talking about with the uh, with the other disturbance uh, from the uh, Pacific. And so both areas, that's the reason why I think it's still definitely plausible that there could uh, potentially be two tropical systems off of this and not just one or the other. And so from a uh, warm mo uh, from a warm moist perspective, the warm sea surface temperature perspective, that is definitely a check mark. Uh, from that parameter. Now for wind shear, uh, this is a little bit interesting because we do have some wind shear off to the north of this tropical system here. And uh, this is basically going to hold it in check, hold it in place for the time being until uh, something comes along to really relieve it and uh, give it an area to go. And so uh, most of this uh, red and uh, kind of brownish, that's some wind shear and upwards of 50 knots, which that is some really unfavorable wind shear. At minimum, uh, you, well, at maximum, you really want at least, well, at most, 15 to 20 knots of wind shear. And so the fact that we have almost double the amount, actually, we do have double the amount of wind shear here, uh, within this general vicinity, really not too favorable for a tropical system to form at this moment. Uh, but then this does start to relieve itself a little bit as this starts to become a little bit of a trough here. We have a little bit of a troughing action here of, from the subtropical jet, and uh, it starts to relieve a little bit of space here for this tropical system to really start to consolidate by uh, late Tuesday into Wednesday. And uh, as this continues to head on through into Wednesday, this wind shear does start to create a bit of a troughing action, starts to force it a little bit further to the north, maybe northeast. And uh, this really starts to uh, kind of consolidate more and more as this low pressure system up here in Texas uh, really starts to steer this other tropical system further north, uh, especially into places like Louisiana, like Mississippi, like Alabama. And so the potential for a tropical system to start moving off to the north and east is possible, uh, but we really are going to want to watch out for it uh, with the wind shear because this could move thunderstorms away from the center area of low pressure system. If you can think of it basically as a tropical system doesn't really like wind shear. It likes to kind of do things on its own. It's kind of like an introvert uh, or a stubborn person. Stubborn is another word too. Um, but 
It's basically one of those things to where it kind of wants to keep to itself and it doesn't want other factors to really impede its progress. So you have um, you have warm sea surface temperatures. If it's staying in its warm environment, it wants to stay in that warm environment. If it gets its own thunderstorm, it's going to want to keep its own thunderstorms. But if there's wind shear, it pushes those thunderstorms away from its main self. And so it doesn't really uh, get all to... Uh, all further comfortable with its uh, environment and it really uh, it gets stuff torn away from it basically kind of a sad story now if we take a look at the dry air here we can see there is still a plume of dry air and dust on monday here across portions of the greater antilles near uh, the bahamas as well as cuba southern portions of florida you also have the uh the uh, moisture there from Invest 92L right in the Bay of Campeche. So it's uh, kind of trapped in between some strong wind shear off to the north, some very dry air off to the east, and it can't, it doesn't really have anywhere to really go. And so uh, as of Monday, don't really foresee this to do a whole lot. You have a lot of dry air that could inhibit this uh, process because tropical systems do like moisture. It does like to try and form thunderstorms on its own without it having to become severe. And so uh, the dry air is going to be a, a factor in the beginning part of this. But then as we get into Wednesday, you can see the dry air actually starts to deplete a bit, becomes a little bit more widespread, but not as potent. And so uh, that's when things could really start to consolidate by Wednesday. A lot more moisture here in the Gulf of Mexico. And then as this does continue to move off, even though there is some dry air here across portions of the Caribbean, uh, and as this heads off to the north and east, it does still seem like it will consolidate itself. According to this uh, run here from the GEOS uh, from NASA, it, uh, it is anticipated to consolidate and form its own tropical system. So dry air in the latter stages of this does seem to not really be too much of a factor. But the interesting thing about this is that uh, there is something about this model run that is indicating that there could be uh, the potential for this tropical system to head a bit further west. And uh, you can tell because this is Friday here. Uh, this is not Invest 93L, but this is Friday according to the top right or uh, even to the uh, top right of this little image. This is Friday, and the tropical system still is in the Gulf of Mexico, whereas the GFS said it was already making landfall over by Louisiana. And so if you go to the next frame here on Saturday, you can actually see that this tropical system is all the way over here near places like Corpus Christi and Houston. So the potential for this thing to uh, veer off is still definitely possible. It still has a lot of ways to go. But I'm thinking personally, if there was some uh, some area to make landfall off of this, it would be somewhere along here uh, to where it could make landfall. I don't think the main uh, main portion of the sun uh, the sunshine state will be impacted unless if the trough really starts to deepen and this thing races off further and further to the north and east to the point where uh, places like Tampa could get impacted. But I really think the area that I circled right over here is the main areas to where it could make landfall. Now, the interesting thing that I want to start talking about is I mentioned how there was going to be a lot of precipitation with this and how that could lead to flooding. But we're going to take a look at the six hour precipitation rate for when this falls, according to the GFS. So it's still a model run. Things can still change. But one thing that I did want to uh, look at from the GFS's perspective is how much rain is actually going to fall over some of these areas. And so according to the GFS, this uh, tropical system actually makes landfall at around the intracoastal city area, but a lot of the rain really starts to wrap around and include play, uh, portions of New Orleans, Biloxi, even Mobile, Alabama. Uh, that general vicinity could potentially get an exceptional amount of rain uh, with uh, the maximum amounts could go in upwards of five inches of rain per six hours, which is really crazy. If we also take a look at the total rain accumulation of the span of 48 hours, a lot of these areas here uh, they're covered in this red, even the browns, which could indicate that three to four, even five to six inches is possible here um, across 
portions of the deep south here and a lot more rain to uh, uh, for a place that doesn't exactly need it especially with how much flooding there was in the prior week over in places like mississippi and louisiana now just for fun here this isn't set in stone but just for fun i also did want to take a look at the ma uh, the maximum sustained winds here for uh, this tropical system, if it does form and head off into the general vicinity of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, Florida, that general area, just for fun, I did want to just see it and uh, show you all with that too. So uh, the maximum sustained wind gusts, even if you take a look at the bottom right hand corner, that's the maximum sustain. The uh, color bar is off to the bottom if you want to follow along just to see out of curiosity. But uh, some of these portions of uh, the coast already start to get and upwards of 10 to 15, even 20 miles per hour as sustained winds uh, by uh, early Friday. Uh, this would be about midnight from Thursday into Friday. And uh, some of these even, uh, some of these maximum sustained winds here in the uh, Gulf of Mexico actually say that it could get up to 46 miles per hour here. And uh, as that continues to move off to the north and e uh, to the north or even northeast, it does intensify a little bit, and uh, the winds really start to kind of wrap up a little bit more. By Friday morning, the uh, winds across the uh, Mississippi River Delta and even places around the Mississippi River really start to kind of uh, go up a bit. And uh, you even see some areas that get up into the 20s for sustained winds. And uh, by the afternoon on Friday, you can see that some of these areas even start to get up to uh, 30s, even to mid 30s into the 40s. Maximum sustained winds here, according to this frame, is uh, 51 or 51.5 uh, miles per hour. Uh, there was actually um, a frame before that I decided not to include, which include uh, which had uh, 57 miles per hour on it. And so the potential for this to become a 60 mile per hour tropical system is possible as this heads off to the north and east. I would still have to take a look. I would probably won't start to make forecasts like that until tomorrow's video which i will be uploading but it is still something interesting to note as this continues to head on through that uh, some sustained winds of uh 20 to 30 miles per hour is possible across much of the deep south here as this progresses from friday into saturday and further on into sunday so if you guys did enjoy the video, which by the way, that's it for me here. This is a pretty long video, pretty in-depth video for the most part with so much to talk about. But if you guys did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like. It helps me so much with YouTube's algorithm as well as getting the information out to people who need it. Subscribe if you are new and turn on notifications because I do videos like this for the most part. I try to do it every morning, but if there isn't a whole lot of activity, I'll do it every other morning. Uh, but I also do live analysis on uh, whether it's severe weather or tropical systems. So if you do want to stay up to date with all the content that I have, as well as catch me whenever, I li whenever I'm live, please be sure to do that. Share this with friends and family and on social media, specifically Facebook and Twitter. A lot of people tend to go over there for information, uh, as well as local news and stuff like that. But Facebook and Twitter, a lot of people typically are on there. And whenever they want information, they typically go to social media sites like that. So please share this on that. Uh, follow me on social media, as well as on uh, Twitter and join my Discord server. That's going to be it for me. My name is Nate. I also go by Hockey Boy and Nate. I will catch you guys in the next tropical discussion video. So peace out, everyone.